Have you ever wondered what you'd get if you mixed the devilish charms of Shuten with the <coughs> proportions of Raiko? Well, someone at Lasangle sure did. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GD Reviews here, bringing you a spotlight for the only snake waifu in Kaldia that has a summer variant, Ibuki. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going for pointers how you utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready to embrace the monster girl craze, then hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. And now, onto Ibuki's stats. Ibuki has a max HP of 13,498 and a max attack of 12,709. Her HP is very low for a Saber, but she does have the highest attack stat in her class. Ibuki's HP is also a bit below average for an SSR Servant, but she more than makes up for that with her attack, which is in the top 10 among all Servants in the game. When it comes to her command cards, Ibuki has 4 hits on her Quick Card, 3 hits on her Art, 3 hits on her Buster, and 5 hits on her Extra Card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.78 and a star rate of 9.9%. Unfortunately, both her NP gain and star generating are on the low end of the spectrum, mostly due to her triple buster deck. Overall, Ibuki's stat spread is full offensive with little utility or defense. She's a true glass cannon. Taking a look at her skills, Ibuki's first skill is Physical Strength of Natural Surroundings, rank A+. This skill increases her attack for 3 hits or 3 turns between 20 and 40%, and it also charges her NP gauge between 30 and 50%, both depending on level. Her second skill is 8 Channel Surging Waves, rank B. This skill increases her Buster Card effectiveness and defense for 3 turns, both between 20 and 30%, and it also grants her between 10 and 20 crit stars, all depending on level. And finally, her last skill is Defiled Fingertips, rank A. This skill inflicts NP Seal on an enemy for 1 turn, and it increases Ibuki's crit damage and damage against undead enemies for 3 turns, between 30 and 50%, both depending on level. For her passives, Ibuki has Magic Resistance Rank A, which increases her debuff resist by 20%, Riding Rank B+, which increases her Quick Card Effectiveness by 9%, Dragon Kind EX, which increases her Buster Card Effectiveness by 12%, and reduces her damage taken by 200, and Snake God's Essence Rank A, which increases her own damage by 250, and increases her buff removal resistance by 20%. Moving on to her deck and Noble Phantasm, Ibuki has a Buster deck with Quick Arts, Buster, 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 and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Shinken Kusanagi no Tachi, which is an AoE Buster attack that deals damage to all enemies between 300 and 500%, depending on level. It also grants Ibuki Ignore Invincibility and Ignore Defense for one turn, and it reduces the Buster Card resistance of all enemies between 20 and 40% for three turns, depending on Overcharge. As one would expect from a Giant Serpent Demon God, Ibuki is quite fond of Bones. For level ascension, she's going to need six Snake Jewels, 29 Evil Bones, 6 Divine Wines, and 5 Demonic Flames. Snake Jewels are best farmed at the Chasm in the Earth in Agartha, where they have a 47% drop rate. Bones can be found at Coordinates XC or XG in Fuyuki, where they have a 25% and 70% drop rate respectively. Divine Wine drops at the Palace of the Dragon King in Agartha, with a 14% drop rate. And Demonic Flames are a new Ascension mat that have a 13% drop rate at Jo3 Bo3 in Heian Kyo. For level Ascension, Ibuki is going to require 44 Bones, 12 Snake Jewels, 11 Dragon Scales, and 10 Demonic Flames per skill. Dragon Scales have a 12% drop rate at Nipper in Babylonia. Holy Buster Gorillas, Batman! Ibuki packs enough firepower to make most Berserkers feel seriously insecure. Her whopping 12.7 thousand attack is the highest attack for any non-extra, non-Berserker class servant in the game, putting her above the likes of Super Orion and Avenger Ishtar in terms of raw power. And that triple Buster deck and 12% passive Buster buff of hers ensures that all of her attacks will pack a punch. The trade-off for this is, of course, that Ibuki has virtually no defense. Her HP stat is middling, and she doesn't really do a good job of accumulating NP gain or crit stars. This may seem like a big drawback at first, but that's where her skills come in. Physical strength of natural surroundings shores up Ibuki's lack of natural NP gain by providing her with a huge 50% NP battery, alongside a 40% buff to attack for 3 hits. The buff to attack is also massive, 
explosive much higher than the average monstrous strength skill, so it'll supercharge Ibuki's damage. On the downside though, it does have a very short uptime of only 3 hits. Thankfully, it does combo well with her NP battery, so you can use it to maximum effectiveness by buffing Ibuki's NP damage and then follow up attacks during a Brave Chain. This makes Buster Brave Chains particularly strong for Ibuki, but more importantly, this skill sets up Ibuki to be an excellent Buster Looper for farming, since you only need 3 attacks to clear 3 waves of enemies. In the right team comps, this essentially ensures that Ibuki can maintain high damage output from her NP across multiple enemy waves. And that isn't the only steroid in Ibuki's kit, she also has 8 channels surging waves. This buff comes in the form of a 30% Buster card damage up, as well as a decent sized Star Bomb and Defense up. Much like Ibuki's last skill, the Star Bomb helps make up for a weakness in Ibuki's innate stats, this one being her lack of star generating. 20 crit stars is a nice amount, and the low cooldown on the skill means that you can use it multiple times in longer battles. The defense buff also gives Ibuki some decent survivability, especially when paired with other defensive supports. But by far and away, the buster buff is the most important part of the skill. The 30% stacks multiplicatively with her 40% attack buff to give Ibuki an overall 80% buff to all of her buster card damage, including her Noble Phantasm. That is a gigantic steroid, and because it lasts for 3 turns, it synergizes perfectly with her attack buff for farming teams. Finally, Ibuki packs some serious utility in Defiled Fingertips. This skill seals an enemy's Noble Phantasm for one turn, and it also buffs Ibuki's crit damage and damage against undead enemies. NP Seal is one of the best debuffs in the game, because it can essentially buy your team an extra turn of survivability in boss fights, so it's especially useful for challenge quests. And while the buffs to crit damage and undead enemies are quite high, they rarely come into play. There are very few undead enemies in FGL, so Ibuki will rarely benefit from this, and despite being able to generate stars from her second skill, Ibuki has no way of pulling them, which makes her inconsistent as a crit servant. For leveling, prioritize her first skill for that huge NP battery, followed by her buster buff for damage, and then you can level her NP seal last. Mana loading and extra card damage are also really the only append skills that are worth taking on Ibuki. Ibuki's Noble Phantasm is an AoE buster attack that pierces invincibility and defense, and it reduces his enemy buster card resistance. Unfortunately, that buster card resist down triggers after damage, so Ibuki's NP doesn't really benefit from that extra bit of buffing. Other than that though, this Noble Phantasm is tremendously strong. Of course, it works perfectly well as a wave clearer since it's AoE, but even in boss fights and challenge quests, Having guaranteed invincibility pierce and defense pierce is phenomenal. There is almost no servant or enemy who can avoid taking full damage from Ibuki's NP. If I had to compare Ibuki to one other servant, it would probably be Ishtar. Both of them have extremely similar skill sets, excel in both farming and boss battles, and like Ishtar, Ibuki is at the top of her class. Her skill set synergizes perfectly with her playstyle and even manages to cover up most of her innate weaknesses. Ibuki is a great general use of offensive servant who can do well at almost anything, but where she shines the most is farming. It's rare for an AoE Buster Servant to have such a strong NP battery, and because of it, even prior to the Vich Oberon era, Ibuki is more than capable of looping her NP on back-to-back -back turns using free-to-play CEs and existing supports. And because her NP hits so hard thanks to her buffs, she can wave clear very effectively. Once we get Vich, Ibuki's usefulness as a top-tier farmer will only grow, so she's also a good investment in the future if you plan on running buster teams for farming. But unlike most other AoE servants, Ibuki also works extremely well in challenge quests. Her NP seal, invincibility pierce, and defense pierce give her a wide range of utility and the ability to dish out high damage against almost any enemy. She's especially useful in boss battles with more than one enemy on screen, which is very commonplace in the late game. Really, Ibuki's only drawback is the obvious lack of defense. Despite her mad defensive buff, she's fairly fragile with no hard defensive skills. That doesn't matter too much when farming, but it can make using her in boss fights a little bit trickier. And while Ibuki is very strong, she is far from the optimal choice in most situations. There are better buster farmers and boss killers out there, very few, but they exist. 
Much like Gil and Ishtar, Ibuki's basically on the boundary of being as powerful as a servant can be without being outright broken. For team comps, you're going to want to pair Ibuki with supports who can charge her NP so that she can farm effectively. Rainus, Nero Bride, and Shakespeare are all good options in that regard. Shakespeare is currently the best free to play option for Buster supports since he can buff Ibuki's damage while also providing her decent NP charge. Similarly, Bride can provide a large NP battery and additional attack buffs, while Rainus and Waver are the best options for fueling Ibuki's looping since they have the largest NP batteries in the game. For longer battles and challenge quests, I would recommend pairing Ibuki with servants who can keep her protected with hard defensive skills like Mosh, Aslipius, or Jean. Mosh and Jean can both provide very strong invincibility skills. Mosh has the advantage of providing Ibuki with additional attack and defense buffs, while Jean can provide cleansing and healing. Aslipius is the best of both worlds since he can provide cleanse, guts, healing, and NP charge. Ibuki's Bond CE is Divine Sword. It increases Buster Card effectiveness of Divine Allies by 20%. The requirement for this buff is a little bit too niche to make this Bond CE useful, unfortunately. Instead, give Ibuki CEs that give her starting NP charge and buff her Buster Card effectiveness, like Aerial Drive, Beautiful Dreamer, or Kaleidoscope, so that she can loop more consistently. Cranking is also a great CE to pick up for Ibuki in the future if you don't already have Aerial Drive, since it also provides 50% NP charge and a buff to Buster Card card and NP damage. As for command codes, codes that increase star absorb can be useful for Ibuki if you really want to make use of her crit capabilities, so I would recommend Lady Justice and Majin Sun. Overall, Ibuki is one of the best Saber class servants to release in FGO in a long time. She is an offensive juggernaut who is capable of both high level farming and boss killing thanks to her incredible NP battery and suite of high utility skills, both of which are uncommon for multi-role servants. She is lacking in defense just like any other glass cannon, and she isn't flat out game breaking as compared to the upper echelon of top tier servants. But if I have to compare her to servants like Arjuna Alter or Morgan to find flaws, then you know she's one hell of a powerful servant. So Ibuki gets an A plus from me. I think Ibuki is an incredibly strong servant who can take on a multitude of offensive roles and excel. It's just a shame that she comes less than a month before the only other AoE saber that's better than her, Muramasa. Still though, if you're a buster enthusiast or you just want a powerful saber to build around, you can't go wrong with picking up Ibuki. And those are my thoughts on Ibuki. It really is a shame that Muramasa casts such a large shadow over her, since she's ridiculously powerful in her own right, and she often gets underrated. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over on our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter, and I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So we're only out. Later.